ever wanted to start a podcast? Have you thought to yourself, well, Morgan's doing it. Why can't I? Anchor is the easiest way to start your podcast that you've been dreaming about. It has all the tools you need in one place. And the best part is, y'all, it's free. So whether you're doing it on your phone, your computer, or a tablet or iPad, it has everything you need to create and edit your podcast. You can distribute on all the major podcast platforms. So basically, what are you waiting for? Definitely go and download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. I can't wait to hear your podcast. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Young Black Misses. I'm your host, Morgan F., and today's episode, we discuss the topic of how your relationship with food really impacts you. And I wanted to touch on this topic because it is Mental Health Month, and um, some people don't know that an eating disorder is actually considered a mental illness. So it's very important that we are mindful of what we're eating. And I know I've discussed on this show before about my vegan, um, my my step into vegan and eating more plant-based food. So we kind of tackled that a little bit in the what you chewing segment. So if that all sounds good to you, why don't you stay with me? And you can take a minute and follow me on Instagram at Young Black Misses or on Facebook with the same name. I'm at Young Black Misses on Facebook and um, Instagram. And soon I'll be on YouTube. Woohoo! So you can find me on there and listen to the episodes on YouTube if that's your, your thing. That's cool. All right, guys, on to the next segment. Let's get into my favorite theme song. Shaking my curls. Uh-uh, I'm shaking my curls. Uh-uh, I'm shaking my curls. Shaking my curls. Uh-uh, I'm shaking my curls. Uh-uh, I'm shaking my curls. Uh-uh, I'm shaking my curls. Shaking my curls. Shaking my curls. There are so many things I can shake my curls at, like, you know, once again, unarmed black people being killed on a run or in their house or having black people die because of the pandemic we're currently in, which is not because of the pandemic. It's because of healthcare and lack of accessibility. I mean, these are all great topics. I could also shake my curls at the fact that savings accounts continue to go down and also could shake my curls at like the APR, APRs keep going down. I could also shake my curls at the fact that people are starting to get back to work when things have not settled and it seems that people are being used as guinea pigs to figure out it's situations right. And it's not about caring for people. It's about caring for the economy. But since this is an episode about veganism and be, be being veganish, I am going to shake my curls to something so light and fluffy that we'll all get a good old laugh. I'm really irritated when people say, oh, does that taste like meat, cheese? It kills me. This is like a public service announcement. I feel as if if it's a homemade substitute, it definitely gives that mouthfeel of whatever it's trying to be. Meat, cheese. Now, nutritional yeast to me really does have a very cheesy cheesiness to it. Um, and I would say, yes, it does taste like mac and cheese or whatever. But, um, like, if you're expecting something to be like something, then you'll probably get all that processed stuff, which is, number one, expensive, and number two, probably not going to give you the health benefits of going vegan, if that was your intent. So it just cracks me up when people ask that. And and, I, and when people say it to me, I'm like, oh, my God, not you, not you, not you. Don't you ask if it tastes like whatever. 
Not really, but it gives you the essence. And that's really all that matters. I, it just cracks me up. But I will say some things do, some things do taste like whatever it's supposed to be like. Like I had, I'm sorry for saying like a lot. So for instance, I had the um, Burger King Impossible Whopper. And I haven't had that in a really long time. And I wouldn't say I was like embracing this plant-based lifestyle at that time. But that really had a meaty taste to it. And I was almost confused. But then my husband was like, no, you can tell this is not the right thing. You, it's, it's, there's, an, there's an aftertaste to it. So I'm like, okay. So everything I said at the beginning and the whole veganism thing, I'm shaking my curls at all of it. It's been an interesting time. But I just thought I'd leave you on a light note. Because that's what I do here. All right, on to the next segment. What you chewing? What am I chewing? Well, I am chewing a variety of things during this stay-at-home order. And actually, April, I pretty much cooked every day. I don't think we went out to eat that whole month. We didn't get any takeout or anything like that. All of, pretty much all of April we went out to eat, which normally we don't we don't go out to eat that much anyways, but just to think that cuz usually I gather on the weekends, but I'm making breakfast, lunch and dinner 7 days a week, ladies if you hear me, fellas if you hear me. Whew, chow. So, honestly, Tuesday night I was like, you know, we we got a couple of things of beans in here. I'm like, okay, I can make uh, bl- black bean b- with potato skins. But I'm like, I don't have this. I don't have that. <laughs> I just didn't have the heart. I was just like, yeah, we got some cash. Let's just get some takeout. And that's what I had to do. And um, I need to think about that when I'm when I do go to the grocery store because I've been going to the grocery store every two weeks instead of every week. And that's rough because I don't, I'm missing out on the produce. But one of the things that I'm obsessed with right now is making vegan mayo. And vegan mayo has um, your non-dairy milk. So I always use almond milk. And then it's got salt, gar- uh, ground pepper, garlic powder, apple cider vinegar, agave nectar. And then this recipe calls for canola oil, but I use half canola oil, half olive oil. I don't know what it is, but it just tastes so good to me, and I am in love with it. I get a I get a lot of my recipes from Pinterest, but I also follow a few people on um, YouTube and Instagram that love to cook, and I've been enjoying watching them. And a lot of stuff on my Pinterest board really captures that. And you're welcome to find me on Pinterest. Um, the name is Young Black Mrs. on there as well. So you're welcome to find me on there. Another thing that I've been enjoying making is um, I've made a lot of vegan ground. I've, I've made vegan ground beef in the past, which is lentils and um, lentils. There's beets. There's mushrooms in that. That's been really good. I made meatballs with it. I made burgers with it as well. Twice. Burgers are so good. I just got an uh, a Insta pot attachment for an air fryer. So there's a gal on, on, um, IG and TikTok. Her name is Tabitha Brown. She makes a lot of things that are cool too. So she made carrot bacon, which is amazing. And I just, I've also made, um, with the carrot bacon, I made, uh, sausage patties, sausage air quotes. So lentil patties, I will call them. Oh my God. So good. But I still think the thing that I'm most obsessed with, I mean, I, I, I think that there are so, I haven't gotten bored with anything. I still can love a pinto beans and rice and feel such, uh, satisfied and full. I'm also loving beans, like navy beans and broccoli. Oh my goodness. So delightful. And I've talked about how I made, the, I believe I've talked about how I made those, that broccoli before. And it's just roasted and I put olive oil to roast it, but I also put lemon and that just really brings out and a little bit of crushed red pepper flake, just uh, so good. And I love that kind of stuff. I mean, there's just so many things that I've really enjoyed making. I think 
because I love beans. I think I'm a, I'm a frugal plant-based eater because I love beans so much. A lot of the stuff is beans, beans, beans. I just think it's a good way to keep yourself full and not, not hungry in 20 seconds. If you're just sitting there eating salads and I don't know, I don't know what people that start out vegan do. Do they, do they immediately go towards all the processed stuff that costs way too much? I don't know. But that's what I've been chewing on lately and I'm getting ready to go to the grocery store. So it's kind of like a doofy week to, to be like, oh, this is what I'm chewing this week. I'm like, yeah, it's not, it's nothing amazing. So I just thought I'd recap um, some of the things that I've been chewing as of, as of late. And I'm hoping that this segment kind of, um, kind of normalizes eating more plant-based and I'm not in any way saying you, you must be plant-based or you should become a vegan. Cause I don't even consider myself that, but I'm hoping that it's like, Oh, this is encouraging. You know, I, I could try this out and see how it goes. And if I like it, cool. And if I don't, then Hey, move it on. So <laughs> I, that's life, you know, just, if it's working for you, keep at it. If it's not then pivot, you know, pivot, you feel me? All right, guys, on to the next segment. Recently, on my Instagram, I shared about a food memory that was near and dear to me. And the food that that brought back a great memory was juice, like fresh squeezed juice. And the memory that it brought back was the time that me and my boyfriend at the time, now husband, went to L.A. for the first time and we experienced a fresh squeezed juice with beets in it. And we were right in front of, um, st- around the Staples Center. And, you know, it's probably something more than I'd pay for um, out here in Kansas City. But I really enjoyed that freshly squeezed juice. And that just brought me back. And I feel like n- that kind of symbolizes my relationship with food and how it has how it has impacted me as I've matriculated and continue to matriculate (laughs) through life. Um, As a child, I never really thought about weight. I never really thought about my weight. I didn't know that other people dealt with weight issues. And I always, I don't think I was ever a picky person. I wasn't the type of kid that didn't want to eat my vegetables or anything like that. And I can confirm because I just got off the phone with my mom um, about this. I'm like, oh, what did I not eat? Um, as a child, I remember not really liking a lot of sweets. Um, I loved cotton candy, though. I still love cotton candy and cheesecake. But I really don't remember liking cake. I liked ice cream. And now I'm really into gelato and nice be nice. Ooh. Um, that's really delicious. Um, um, but I didn't really love like salty things like chips or my mom said I wasn't crazy about gravies and sauces, which I can understand why I wasn't crazy about sauces to the point where I used to not eat. I would eat spaghetti with spaghetti with tomato sauce, but I would just have the, the the pasta noodles and I put, I feel like they were like buttered pasta noodles. They had some sort of oil on them. And I don't think it was olive oil. I think it was some, I think it was butter and I would put Parmesan cheese on it, which sounds really good. Like some nutritional yeast with some noodles, a little olive oil, some basil. Mm, yum. But I just, I think I've always pretty much been aware of what's going in my body and what it does for me, even, even as a child. And it, it seemed to be cool to be slim and it seemed to be cool to be small. And I had family that would call me high school skinny, even to this day. And that's not really one of my favorite things because I'm so much more than just my physique, this brain, these this these words that I'm dropping, this knowledge that I'm bringing to you, um, is so much more valuable than how what size dress I wear, you know. So, I think people's relationship with food impacts them throughout 
their life. And it's Mental Health Awareness Month, so I'm taking a different approach because eating is something that I love, but I know people struggle with eating through eating disorders. And there are several different types of eating disorders. And I think it stems back to what you're, I, I think, I'm not a doctor. I'm not, I don't even play one on TV, you know? Um, but I think that it can stem back to, everything stems back to your childhood. But I think it stems back to your relationship with food from the start. I remember seeing something on one of my favorite TV shows, The Real. Lonnie Love is one of the co-hosts. And she was talking about her weight loss journey. She's using a WW, formerly known as Weight Watchers, WW. And she was showing everyone what she ate in a day or something like that. And she said at one point, she, she started crying because sometimes she gets emotional. And she just said, I just don't think black people, black women know how to feed themselves. And I understood she didn't mean all black women because... Honey, I got it. But I think that is a problem within not just the black community, but I think that's a problem within lots of communities that we don't know exactly how how to eat to fuel our body. I'm sorry I got loud, but I just I just got passionate because I just don't think people know how to fuel their body properly. I think people eat for a lot of different reasons. Boredom. Sometimes you can legit be hungry. Like I'm a little hungry right now. I don't know what I'm going to eat. Um, but a lot of the times I think boredom or you might have a taste for something, cravings or your comfort, you're, you're depressed, you're feeling some sort of sadness. Um, there's a lot of reasons that you can, that are not just for nourishment's sake. We have to be very, very mindful of that. And even in this, even in this situation now that we're going through, a lot of people have been asked to been ordered to stay home, yet there's people that I know that are going out and ordering different foods, and they're not the, the best choices of foods, but I think it's it's comforting, it's something they know, and it's something that makes them feel okay. And I get that. I do. I understand that. Like the other day, I had a mac and cheese with a Z. It wasn't cheese. It was mac and cheese with a Z. And that made me feel good. I've been wanting that for a while. It was white wine mac and cheese. It was delightful. I put some spinach in it because I was feeling like, ooh, this is a little bit. I need something. Um, I just think that our relationship with food really speaks to how we eat. And even just thinking of how we eat and just how we live our lives and how we feel about ourselves. Because I know people that are maybe not in the shape that they want to be in. And I don't think I'm in like the fitness shape that I want to be in. I think I eat right, but I think I could work out a little bit more um, to really get that, the whole one, two punch, boom, boom, you know, going for my health. So that's something that I'm striving towards. But I think going back to another thing that I realized with my relationship with food is I have my, my mom, um, she just acknowledged it. She said, you know, you've always been pretty conscious of what you're eating. And I think I remember that specifically in college. I couldn't, I can't tell you exactly what I ate for breakfast or dinner, but I know for lunch, I made sure lunch, I would get two deli sandwiches and I'd save one, (laughs) save one for later. Um, And then I would get a side salad and maybe maybe pasta or sometimes i would get fruit most of the time i would get fruit and water i drink water all the time water is lovely i water is bay is what i was getting ready to say but i don't know if people still say that um but i don't care i just did meh and i think cuz i used to see my mom drinking lots of water too so i was like oh okay you know my mom's drinking lots of water so that was kind of like a like a, a learned behavior like a monkey see monkey copy though I'm not a monkey. Um, And so after a while, when I got back from school, from Wilberforce, I was still living with my folks, but they went on this Daniel fast. And if you know anything about a Daniel fast, it's 21 days. And they're they're basically 21 days of veganism. It's funny that I didn't want to get on board with that then, 
because they're 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 not eating any animal product. So it's pretty much 21 days of just fruits, vegetables, nuts, legumes, that kind of thing, beans, da, 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 that kind of thing. So pretty much they were they were basically vegan um, for those 21 days. And I don't want to get on board with that. At the time, I was like 23, 24. Eh, didn't want to do that. That was the beginning of the year. It's cold outside. Mm. Um, so that is when I learned to cook. And I learned to cook through Hungry Girl. Her first name is Lisa Lillian. Um, and the reason I learned to cook through her is because she had recipes that did for one or one or two people. So it's easy for me to portion it out properly other than making these big old meals for four. And then you're like, well, there's a bunch of food. Let me just keep eating it. Um, I didn't do that. And again, that shows my relationship with food. And as I continued, um, about 27, 28, probably, probably somewhere around then I watched the documentary, what the health. And that's what moved me towards a more plant-based life. Now I won't commit to saying, oh, I'm vegan because this year I've had cheese. I haven't, I had shrimp, I had salmon, you know, but I'm trying, I, I'm trying every day to eat a more plant-based life, to live a more plant-based life. And I think that's because of the documentary and also because I'm wondering what is really being put in this food. And so I feel like there's going to, there's going to come a certain time where either I'm just grabbing stuff from the farmer's market or I just recently hopped onto this one marketplace called Thrive Market. And I'd be happy to share a referral link with you guys. So if you're interested in that, it'll be in the show notes if I'm able to get a referral, which I'm pretty sure I can. Those places usually have things like that. Um, but just a place that offers more organic food things that I know what's inside, but I'm also concerned about my, my spin too. So that's why I'm very mindful of what I'm doing. And I'm just coming into the grocery stores for produce, rice, beans, that kind of thing. Um, and not really going too wavy, but I think that even if you're just thinking, okay, well, I know my relationship with food is not amazing. Morgan, yours sound pretty good. And I want to, I want to get like you. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying that you have to be vegan um, or eat plant-based to have a good life. I know for me in 2018, when we started, we, me and my husband started eating more plant-based. The energy I felt initially and babe is, is nearby so he can speak to it. The energy I felt initially was like, whoo. And as you keep on living, the aches and pains start to um, alleviate. But beyond just how physically I feel, um, I've also lost some weight. And I'm already fairly small, so that's not the best thing. But it is what it is. But I'm just, I'm just thinking that if your relationship with food is not amazing, or if you feel your relationship with food is not amazing, consider trying a vegan lifestyle and then adding things back in. Because sometimes you may feel like I've noticed. Um, yes. Okay. The last time I had cheese was April 11th. And the reason I know that is because that's, that's my anniversary for my sorority. Um, and I had made... It was good too. I'm not gonna lie to you. I had made Alfredo because I was trying to get rid of some the rest of the cheese in the house, and I didn't want to waste anything. And my parent, my mom didn't. I don't think she wanted it, or I'm not sure. I I had it, so I was like, okay. I'm trying to get rid of this Alfredo. I had shrimp Alfredo, and so sitting on this call, I make the Alfredo. It doesn't take much time. Um, I'm, then I'm sitting on this call with, with my friends and I'm literally passed out because dairy makes me so sleepy. Like dairy and wine are 
snooze fest for me. If I have too much of either, but like I know that about that, I know that about myself. So I just stay away from the dairy and I'm not gonna stay away from the wine. I'm just gonna drink the wine and know I'm done for the night. <laughs> um, but these are things you'll learn when you try different things. And these are things that will continue to benefit you, not only just your physical well-being, but your mental well-being. Food, food is fuel. And if we think of food in that manner, if we think of food not like I had mentioned earlier, oh, I'm bored. Oh, I'm craving this. Oh, I want something to comfort me. Oh, whatever, whatever. If we think of I need that nourishment. I need something to refresh me. I need something to fill me up. I need something to saturate my 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 needs, what my body needs. I need something to nourish what my body needs. If we think of food in that manner, then that that flips the script, okay? That flips the whole script. All right, guys. <laughs> On to the next segment. The positive tip. So I think the biggest takeaway I want you to have from this particular episode is to be mindful of what you're eating and also why you're eating it. Because I think if we understand why we're eating, we can figure out what our relationship with with food is and is it healthy? Should we be considering changing something? Should we modify something? Because if food is our fuel, then it's probably the most intimate relationship we, we have with anything. I mean, it goes in our mouths, it goes in our bodies in ways that you know, nobody really can go, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's one of the most like intimate relationships you, you'll have. And so knowing why you're eating the food, like, are you bored? Are you actually hungry? Are you thirsty? Because people be out here forgetting that thirst and hunger are two different things. Like you could be hungry and you could be thirsty. You could be hungry and thirsty at the same time. And some things just feel counterproductive in my opinion, but like we won't get into my joke, but remember not only what you're eating, but why you're eating it. And I'm no fitness person. I'm just a girl, you know, I'm just a wife. I'm just a woman. I'm just awesome. Pretty much. I have to gas myself up. And you're awesome too because you've listened to this whole podcast and you've probably been rocking with me for a while. So thank you. If you've gained value out of this podcast or this episode in particular, make sure to share it with your friends and also stop and snap a screenshot of your screen and tag your girls. So I know you're out here listening at Young Black Mrs. Podcast. Uh, mm -mm. Changed it at Young Black Mrs. on Instagram and Facebook. Once again, for the people in the back at young black misses on Instagram and Facebook, because it is all one thing and Pinterest too, because I changed that. So you can find me on there if you'd like to look up the pins, because that's fun. Anyways, until next time, I will talk to you guys in a couple of weeks. As you know, we're every other Thursday. So take care. Thank you.